Here we are, on the left side, the blue team, by the name of SK Gaming, with Link playing Ufer, Aragi on Thrall, uh, Zarmini playing Arthas, and down here we have BZ on Tesla and Bakery playing Felstad. Five, and four, on the right hand three, side, in the red trunks, one, it is Planet Key eight, Dynamics, well, as Paul said, heroes. mostly German. We have Fevi on the Valor, Invidium on the Tychus, BKB is on the Tyriel, Nebza is on the bright wing with the master skin and in the bot lane it is anti-hero on the Muradin and we have the death brush here at the top. Uzarmini needs to watch out see if yeah, he brush. scouts us out but he's not seeing them anywhere else so they're they thinking got, they either the middle bot lane. There. they think they're there. Yeah they think they're in, in that death brush over here. Uzarmini making his way out. Oh they revealed themselves. Rearranging oh. everything. Now they're Let's actually going down there to that death brush but Nope, rearranging everything. No one really cleared out the lane like we saw in that previous game. Yep, to some extent to go straight away for the party lane and do some da and just get that pushed up instead. Rather than, like you said, going for that four man clear and then, or the four man double lane clear as they have done in the past. Nope, just a party lane for both teams uh, in the bot lane. Um, I'm not sure who I'd give it to right now. Oh, Arthas was taken out. Good lord, that was quick. That was from Vala and Tyriel Fevi roaming yeah, up. I think Fevi uh, did hide in these bushes over here. I mean, she came from up here. Arthas was taken out over here, so uh, she must have hidden in the bushes. This, this does mean that she did just give up quite a bit of XP in this mid lane, but she's still picking it up. And because of the kill, she did actually give her team a bit of an advantage so not losing too much there and this is what you must do if you roam if you roam and there's no one holding your lane you have to get the kill if you do it's usually going to give you a side xp advantage otherwise the best thing you could do if someone roams to your lane is let them stay there as long as possible see if you can bait them do what you can because otherwise they're just going to miss out on all that xp in the other lane yep you have to play safe, but also try to bait them out. So, level 4 talents are coming in. We have Envenom on Brightwing, where she did take Bright before. And uh, other than that, no real surprises. This time, Spray and Prey for Tychus, so no grenade uh, skills just yet. Yeah. No Nazi Bow, and it's being taken by Panic Key this time, rather than Bakery from the side of SK. So, not too bad. Oh. Um, Panic Key did have control of this. Uh, of this um, Dragon Knight, or at least the Shrines for a second there, but now both of them are in control for SK Gaming. Yep, not much chance our Argy's gonna get in there, anti hero. Playing does a good harassment. Bakery tried to come in, drop some damage, but the top shrine has already gone back over to Planet Key. Ooh, Planet Key actually controlling both of these right now, but um, looks like Bakery can defend here, and our Argy also helping out against anti hero. Yes. So. Unless they get, unless they get a kill, I doubt that any team would actually be able to go for that Dragon Knight just yet. Yeah, I would agree. There's a good, they're going to struggle. Both teams being very vigilant, being very protective of that middle lane, and just sending people now and again to scuffle over the top and bot lanes. And once again, we see a shrine swap. Granite Key Dynamics taking the top lane. SK have control of the bot lane. Yeah, BKB fighting against Zarmni over here. Pretty much even out right now. Murden coming in, trying to stop our Ragi, but I think we need to take a look here in the spot lane. Ooh, Phoebe. Yep, he needs to dash away, and Individuum is getting healed back up. But I think SK can finally take control of that bot lane again, and Arthas in top should be good to go as well. So they'll yep. just try to stick around and keep control of this bottom shrine. Nepsa regaining control here, and He's now gonna both teams are level it, 7. Yeah, level 7 talents available for both teams. Seeing a couple back momentums from Tyrael and Thrall. Nothing too unusual on those. In fact, oh sorry, and uh, Valor, I missed that one. Vidium, able to, oh sorry, that's Fevi. Able to escape from Vidium, also back now. In comes Anti-Hero. Uh, Ragi catching a little bit of damage, but not too much. And uh, he will stay back. Now we have four heroes from both teams in the spot lane. Really trying to take control of this bottom shrine. Meanwhile, uh, KD, they still have control of the top shrine. Bakery catching quite a bit of damage, but he's getting healed back up. And uses that mana well to get to full health again. So they were trying to get the siege camp. Oh no, actually siege camp was captured by PKD. And so and was the Dragon Knight. Oh, nice, nice combination. Going for that uh, siege camp ensured them that uh, they would need to react. Otherwise, 
uh, they would lose a little bit of damage on that fort. And um, that bought them the time to go for that Dragon Knight. I like it. Yep, used it so they would ha keep control of the shrines, keep damage on elsewhere. But this did mean that there must have been at least someone, I'm assuming just Brightwing, not on the map who was uh, giving them time to, uh, while SK could have easily wandered into one of the shrines and maybe taken them. So, a bit of a misplay there possibly by SK, but then again, I am watching a sideshow. I cannot tell what happened to that march. Linked is still sticking around in mid lane and uh, Muradin trying to push him back, but they're doing some good work just split pushing here. BKB pops out of that Dragon Knight, should be able to get away. Yes, he does. Eldruin's Might saves him once again, and he's staying quite safe. Bottom lane is being pushed really hard here by PKD, but they're just making the turn around. I'm kind of scared uh, for SK to rotate. And instead going for the Bruiser Camp here, taking the neutral Bruiser Camp. I like how Nepsa scouting out the left side, making sure that no one's coming in. And this should give him level 10, uh, almost half a level ahead, and might make a push for it now. Yep, there is a level 10, and the talents we are seeing, once again, very standard. Emerald win for Brightwing, Odin for Tychus, Avatar for, uh, for Muradin, Judgment for Tyrael. Valor, though, is the one we're going to possibly be seeing some question about, but it is going to be the Reign of Vengeance. Yep, and over on SK's side, we have Archon, we have Divine Storm, Kindle Blast, Army of the Dead, and Sundering. Of course, uh, no heroics have been triggered just yet. Everyone just stick into their lanes. Three versus three in the bot lane, and yeah, all the other lanes are still soloing it out. A little bit surprised about that. Yep, just soaking XP. Neither team wanting to make a move here, even though they have. And uh, I think that was quite wise by Planet Key. They had a tiny window to engage when they yeah. had ultimates, but it was just too small to take the chance. Yeah, I mean that was about one. I think it was about the Bruiser kill when um, when SK got that level ten. So I think it was the right idea here to not go for that engagement and not force it at least. Oh, Aragi caught up on the right side. That comes, comes anti hero jumping in. Oh, and the Reign of Vengeance, but not doing all that much. Just pushing them back, sundering, dividing this team. I doubt this is gonna be a team fight here. They just used a couple of heroics and um, got out of there as soon as. Yeah, pretty, unlike, uh, pretty unlikely there. Right now, both teams once again heading back to lanes, trying to soak. We're seeing a couple members of SK heading down here because they really need to try and contest this shrine. Siege camp. Uh, I think Nepsa wanted to try to, to take it here. Um, he has stacks up. So Does he not want to get go caught out steal. by Bakery though. Mm -hmm. That's true. Bakery coming in. BB catching a little bit of damage. Individuum dashes away. They had they had control of the Dragon Knight and now they're taking it. And this time it should be the mid fort that's taken a lot of damage here. That is and two Dragon Knights in down. seven minutes. Or yeah, in eight it's not bad. Just. Completely different to what we've seen in the previous time previously. Always on me with a good route onto Individuum, but he needs to get back to his team. And so he does. Antihero rotating up again. Could have used that flame strike on the mid lane before wasting a little bit of um, of his cooldowns here. Yep. But we'll take down this gate and the tower. DKB helping and coming in to help out. And everyone else just rotating down. I like the split pushing so far. DKB will get out of here. And anti hero, well, he only has about 50% on his health, so he will probably get out as well. They're forcing a lot of rotations out of SK. Doing this quite well. Double rewind on Brightwing and Muradin is available. So is Relentless on Tychus. And uh, that should be the Frost Shot on Valor and the cast aside from Tyrion. Yeah, that's true. There's the steal. Nepsa did go for a bribe here. And mid lane is in trouble. Zarmini caught out some nice body blocking on him, but they're letting him go. They're letting him go. Let's pop the army of the dead and he Arthas will rotate again. always walks away. Yeah. He's like Arthas. old Ufa. <laughs> uh, we have Relentless on Arthas now and Shrinkray taken by Tassilar. And here's Sprint of course for Uther, Giant Killer on Felstad, and Grace of Air for Ball. Now the Giant Killer on Felstad is one that's a possibly a little bit unusual, seeing as most people like to build him pretty much pure ability power, where in this case you'd be taking the increased damage on Lightning Rod. However, Bakery seems to prefer running the Giant Killer just like he has some kind of extra damage. His auto attacks are pretty nice anyway once he has thrown out his burst combo, just so he can start working down people. Oh. 
pushing top lane now quite well with a lot of bruises. Um, so far this fort hasn't taken any damage and SK quickly rotating back up. Individuum and Nepsa just waiting down here. This fort has taken some damage so I think they will get at least one of them. Yep. That's the rotation again, out of Planet Key Dynamics. Ooh, our Ruggy caught out here in the middle, but uh, they don't have any... They don't have too much stuns available. There's the Sundering, getting Fevy cast aside, and BKB jumps out as well. Sundering not doing the best work so far. Yeah, we, we we've seen, seen a lot, seen of, uh, of, the... lot of whiffed Sunderings that yeah. haven't been very useful uh, today. Ooh, Bakery needs to watch out. There's the Judgment and a nice follow-up with the Reign of Vengeance. They take him out for free here. That's a nice pickup. Should give him level 16. Yes, there is. At level 16 coming in, blood for blood on Tyrael. We have stone skin on Tychus. Grid Arise taken by Brightwing. Stone form trade for Mr. Mirrodin. And another blood for blood for Vala. We are blessed. Yep, a lot Lord. of burst damage coming out Free from Panicky Dynamics here. This is what they want to be doing. We saw it perfectly there. Using the judgment in and picking off pretty much the only damage dealer that Dragon SK Knight. has. Wow, really? they're really ruling this game with the Dragon Knight's map objective. Definitely working out quite well for SK for um, Planet Dynamics so far. Yeah, Planet Key gonna be demolishing that top four with pretty much no contestion here, and there's very little SK can do about it. We're seeing them, we're seeing Frawl at least head down to this bot lane to clear up the wave to make sure they get some XP. The rest of the team hanging around the mid lane in case the Dragon Knight roams down because they know they can't defend the top lane, and they can get to their top lane keep just in case Dragon Knight decides to keep pushing back just as quickly if they stayed where they were. Antihero so far not kicking Zamini out of this fight. I'm a little bit surprised. Usually you want to kick him out of the fight. He's just focusing on this fort. They will most definitely get this fort. Um, but not really setting up for, for a nice team fight. Just going for the fork, staying safe. Antihero will certainly pop out of this Dragon Knight pretty soon. Maybe you can try another rotation. Uh, but I doubt that it's, that it's possible. Only five more seconds. He's not going to get there in time. Yep, wonderful. Brightwing has the uh, the newest and most common bug in the game. Oh, this is perfect. I love this. <laughs> yeah. The money pick Brightwing. Money pick Brightwing. I've, the best one I have seen is a combination of Crab and Squirrel, both on Brightwing at the same time. That is the best one I've seen. But it, it can be literally any of the animal sprites in the game. It is awesome. It can be the... Uh, it can If you play as a... Uh, as the Luxorian, the flying monkey Brightwing, you can have your monkey bomb on your back. Nice. Indeed. Yeah, those bucks are really fun. Yeah, well, they're my favorite at the, <laughs> at the moment. And the key will rotate to the Sea Giants, will take us out quite swiftly. Tyrael sticking in the mid lane, uh, just scouting out what SK is doing. And now they're rotating back in there. Waiting, waiting for SK to make a mistake. I'm in from the backside, let's see if this works out. BKB has not go. shown himself, and Aragi, yeah. yeah, they know they're here, they know they're here. They're still going for this trap, there comes the Reign of Vengeance, and a nice CC, Arf is immediately taken out. They're going for Link, but he puts out another CC, Aragi in the middle of all of this, and getting some good shields, but after platform jumps on top of them. Link is in trouble, he's taken out, and that's two heroes down. They will most definitely get this wall down. Looks like they're gonna rotate, rotate back out of this. Drill is kind of low, um, but everyone else is still in a pretty good spot and they're rotating towards these Siege Shines. Good timing once again for Planet Key Dynamics. They will get another gate here and uh, possibly force their way into this team. Yeah, Planet Key Dynamics doing a fantastic job here. They have been basically dominating all game at this point. They had the, and I would like to call this out, all the way back to the draft because they got everything. They got all the best assassins. They got a very solid warrior, they, as they picked it up exactly when you said they should. It was very good timing. They got the best support, but that was because SK let them. Their comp is solid, and SK had to go with something a bit different, and it's just because they didn't have many options left, and it's just not working out here. Yeah, not really working out so far. I mean, they didn't even get a single fort until now. And it doesn't look like they will get they will get one now, to be honest. I mean, they're trying to contest these shrines, which I think is a good idea, but they really need a really, really good team fight. And they're two levels behind right now. So um, 
Is this going to yeah. be hard to pull off? I think this is their best option right now. Just hanging around and you need to pick someone off and then try and either force a fight or force some kind of push because you're not going to win a straight up team fight. So Never. an engage or a trap like maybe this picking off someone when they're alone might be enough. Oh yeah, there was a good reign of vengeance to keep Murden alive. And now it looks like everyone is just retreating out of this. Hitler and Glass getting Invito him out of his own form and now he's caught out there. He does use the first aid. Aragi is killed off and BKB trying to come in from the backside to get easy, catch, catch him while he's retreating and looks like that pushback did it work. That's another 3 for nil. And uh, Planet Key Dynamics again on top of things. We have the bruises pushing in top lane. We'll certainly will go for another Dragon Knight here. Yep, uh, that's Brightwing taking top shrine. Bottom shrine is under their control. They go for the siege camps at the same time, so those will wail away at the wall. And Bruiser Camp looks like that's their next choice here. That's a massive onslaught. I doubt that uh, SK Gaming can do anything about this. Way too many mercs, plus the Dragon Knight. That's just too much DPS coming their way. Yep, they have Bruisers already in the top lane. They have Bruise. They have Giants in the bottom lane, and the the Dragon Knight in the mid lane. Every lane is under pressure. And like you said, I don't think there's much SK could do about this. They are just going to have huge amounts of trouble. Two seconds till Castile's up. We should be up and by now. And uh, yeah, I don't think there's much they can do about this. This keep is definitely going down at minimum. Yeah, uh, I would say maybe two keeps. Oh, that's a good job on Janespa. He's taken out and with the main support gone, looks like uh, Planet Key is retreating out of this. They still have those Siege Shines that are working away here. Bruises are taking out the top lane. But I think this was a good call. Uh, otherwise, this we could snowball blessed. out of their control and we could see uh, a nice little comeback move out of SK. Definitely I, a good call to get rid uh, or get out of that fight once Brightwing was gone. Yep, even though they did have the level 20 advantage, but Brightwing popped her level 20 ultimate, which was just the extra pushes on her Nova. On uh, What's it called? Emerald Nova? Is that what it's called? Emerald Nova? Uh, scroll over it. Level 20. Continuous wins? Oh, wait. Continuous wins. Oh, is that it? Oh, okay. I thought it was called something different. I thought it had Nova in the name. I stand corrected. But, uh, yeah, the Continuous Wins, the extra pushbacks was used, and it just didn't really get much done. So, this they chose to back up even with that advantage. But the level 20 the ultimates, we see them all upgrading their ultimates, except for Valor, who is once again playing it safe with Bolt of the Storm. Yeah, that's cool. I mean, Fivy didn't really get caught out so far. But playing it safe uh, to get rid of these weird situations. Oh, what the heck is Speaker Bakery doing? Oh, there comes the judgment onto him. He's getting healed back up, but that's not going to be enough. I think he was trying to fly up, but uh, not quite in time. They really caught him out. And now they're all going for it. One hero down for 50 seconds. This should give him the breathing room and the extra leg space to go for this keep and possibly go for the core if they get another hero picked up here. Yeah, once again, popping the Odin. Oh, Aragi waiting for thundering. It's not coming in just yet. Yeah, once again, like I said, Tyker's going for the Odin before the fight starts. So that any burst that might have gone on to him is just going to bounce off that completely useless health ball that will expire by the time they get to they get through it anyway. So this is what he's been using. And the help of the nuclear missile from the big red button helps clear forts pretty quickly. They're rotating back up. Um, not even going for this gate. That's a little bit surprising, to be honest. But hey, they're playing it safe once again. Um, definitely not risking anything at all tonight. Well, and they can go for it once the dragon is up, which they will be taking. I don't, once again, as we've said quite a few times this game, I don't think there's anything SK can do about this. Yeah, I think this time they might stand a chance, because we only have three heroes down here. Uh, Tyrael is out of control, but ooh, he goes straight into the dragon knight. Good retreat, nice timing out of all of these heroes, and now they're coming back together, trying to reunite with the Dragon Knight, and I think this time they can make a run for the core, but probably want to take out another hero beforehand, just to play it safe. Yeah, they're going to wander their way into the base, look for a pickup, see who they can get, and make sure their minion wave is with them. We can see them hanging around, waiting for any ultimates to come out, waiting for someone they can pick off. They do not want to overextend. Yep. Because right now, if they would lose this team fight, that would be a way for SK to come back here. Here comes the Flame Breath and a shrunk PKB here in this Dragon Knight. Nice way for Napsa to push him back. And they're going straight for the support for now. Napsa will fall here. Individual quite low as well. The Reign of Vengeance coming in, not doing all that much. And Bala is dropping quite low. 
Uh, looks like she can stay safe and they're just focusing this core and it will go down. That two level advantage really helping out. And that's Planet Key Dynamics going for the 1-0. But SK, um, I think they still have a chance to come back in this best of three in the grand finals of the Go for Heroes Cup EU number three, uh, number nine, rather. Number three? Yeah, that <laughs> was ages going ago. back in time, good lord. But let's get started with this game. We are on Sky Temple and the blue team spawn on the left side. They are SK Gaming. Araragi is playing Sagara. Then we have Link playing Uther, Zarmini playing Arthas, Bakery on Tychus, and soloing the top lane, BZ on Malfurion. And on the right hand side, in the red trunks, it is Planet Key Dynamics. And starting in the top lane, it is Fevy playing the Valor. BKB is playing the Muradin. Nebza is on the bright wing with the master skin. And yep, just going to have a little, little scuffle there. No, I was just I was just watching the scuffle. Oh, a okay. little scuffle there <laughs> over the watchtower. Nothing happened, really. And hero is on the Thrall. And in the bot lane, it is the Tassadar, who will be played by Nvidium. Okay, let's see how these lanes will distribute. Looks like Antihero and Nepsa are taking mid. Uh, they'll probably rotate back up. As you said before, um, we usually see this uh, triple stack in the top lane because the first two shrines or first two temples that appear are in top and mid lane. Yep, and obviously the top lane is in between those two. So like you said, it's the most efficient lane when it comes to deciding which temple you go to. Most pros consider the mid lane to be more important but it's not a huge deal if you can still get the full duration out of the top lane. Yeah, BKB securing the watchtower. And they're trying to turn around here. BKB is coming in from the left side, but this is a strong triple uh, triple lane. I don't think they can do all that much here. Yep, and they realize this. Get out of there just before the grenade hits in the bush. Nice timing to get out. Yep. Uh, could you bring up the talents, by the way? Oh yeah, sure. <laughs> Centrifugal hooks. Oh, that is that's actually a very interesting talent choice. Mm, gives them some really good range. Conjurer's yeah, pursuit. Good range. Off. Throw them. Throw that into a temple when the opponent's sitting there. You can just keep throwing that over and over again. You're eventually gonna work down, work out quite a lot of damage. That or it could be a misclick. Who knows? Uh, I think it could be a viable option here. We'll see. We have the double Conjurer's pursuit on the supports. And on the other side, we do see the double in Venom coming out from Brightwing. And not an Envenom coming out from Zagara, so otherwise we could have seen quadruple in Venom this game. But we do see the healing totem from Malfurion, so like we said before, a lot more sustain. And both teams doing what we've seen last time we watched this map. We saw one team grabbing the mid temple, one team, one team grabbing the top temple, and they're going to keep their and in the meantime keep temples. someone in all of the lanes to make sure they get the XP. Yeah. And Bruises will be taken here for Planet Key Dynamics. And yeah, they should be should be dealt with quite swiftly now with BKB and Fevi are doing this. Um Brightly will need to watch out though, since uh, that triple stack is still active in the top lane. And yeah, she's doing just that, staying back, uh, staying behind her minions, just starting back and forth. But they do have vision on all other lanes, so they know it's only a triple stack. I don't need to watch out for anyone coming from behind. Rosu camp has been taken and should be uh, should be pushed here by Napsa. Yeah, this is true. Should be able to, yeah, at least some kind of pushing back, uh, counter pushing done. And we can see SK. They have been waiting for their Bruiser camps and will probably take it in a couple minutes. Uh, I believe before 4:30, I think the timing is, or at least uh, about for, uh, before the four-minute mark which is when the next temple spawns. They want to get the push going within perfect time so they can get to the temple and still have damage going on the other lanes. BKB though, roaming in, looking for a pick. Yeah, they have three people down here now, plus the Siege Giants. Uh, this could be a strong push and our Rocky might need some help here. He doesn't have any creep spread down here, which is a little bit surprising. Just a little tiny speck over here. And BKB, he's thinking about stealing this. But, oh, Aragi doesn't have the vision over here. Nepsa going in and bribing all of this. So that's a four stack off Seed Shines coming to us the bot lane. Yep, and that is very nice, but taking them a little bit early 
means that, well, SK will be on their way down here, uh, won't be on their way down yet because the temple has yet to spawn, so that was actually good timing. Now the temple spawning, SK are on their way down to secure it, but those giants have still done a lot more damage than they probably would have otherwise done. Yeah, uh, the tower's almost done. Individuum buying a little bit of time here for his team to get there. Root misses, BKB is down there, Bakery caught out a little bit here. But both of these teams are not quite level 10, so I doubt that we'll see a huge fight. But Zarmini, he's being caught out and will be taken out. Things to get away there as well. Now with 4v5, I doubt that SK can make anything happen here. This should be the temple for Planet Key Dynamics. They're still yeah, trying SK. to make this work. They're still but thinking it about it. They can still get a pick fairly, but uh, pretty nicely here if they do get the good engagement. But it's so dangerous. Yeah, around. Trying to come in, but he's stunned, he's stunned and should be taken out. A great, great move here. That's two heroes down. That's definitely the entire temple going towards Planet Key Dynamics. And the final shots are coming in, so they will rotate out of this. Go back to the lanes and possibly even secure this boss now. They are level 10. It's gonna take quite a bit of time until SK Gaming gets up and uh, catches up. Yep, we can see SK. Pretty much just heading to their lanes, making sure they can get some XP. There's not much chance they'll be able to contest this boss. I'm not going to stop them trying, mind you. But they are too late. Yep, they're jumping in. He could be going for it. BZ caught out here. Oh, there comes the stun. And Reign of Vengeance coming into BZ. He's taken out. Another hero falling here for SK. He's getting out of their control, but they have level 10 talents now. MPKB, ooh, he's barely run up past that route. Boss is attacking the fort. He's trying to get healed by that mule, but they will take it out. And yeah, mule, a pretty nice talent choice on this map due to the fact that it can heal the damage done to the temple and thus make giving the enemy team a temple not as important. If you can heal a fort up, you're going to keep your forts for a lot longer. It's unlike the Blackheart's Bay where it's guaranteed damage. You can delay it long enough to keep your fort alive while you roll in and retake the temple. And uh, Planet Key again playing this really safe, just doing the damage they can, then immediately backing off before it gets too hairy. Now, it uh, looks like they will return to their lanes. Next temple should be coming up pretty soon. I think it's uh, top and bottom? Yeah, I think, we've made, I think we've made this mistake before and said it oh, was like just... Oh, a good me. route onto BKB, but Individuum popping into his Arkham form. Link pushed away here, and there comes the CC. Zarmini caught out, he's completely body blocked and taken out here by the Archon. A good maw to at least keep some semblance of control. Nepsa and Antihero will get away. Link with a good stun onto BKB, but he will run off. And looks like these sea giants were stolen here by SK. But they lost Arthas for it. And still gone for a couple seconds. And a key, they could give chase here. But instead, uh, two sending two heroes up to toward the top temple and one towards that bottom temple. And sending Brightwing is an excellent choice. Brightwing can just pour it up and get with her team if they want to take that top temple or um, at least contest it somehow. Yep, it looks like they do want to contest it. Anti hero and BKB looking for an entry point here. Cooldowns are um, all still going here for SK. They're definitely not in a good position to go for this temple. They don't want to lose it either. And Brightwing does have Heroic up as well. There comes the Avatar and Zarmini. Looks like he's going to be focused here. Oh yeah. Shield helps him out quite a bit. Oh, there comes the Random Vengeance onto BZ, but he gets away. Uther is taken out though. And BKB just jumping straight into the temple again. They want to get those shots off and possibly take up the top forward, which I think they might be able to. Another mule trying to heal it back up. But it's not going to be enough. The top forward will fall. And a couple more shots will get in uh, towards that uh, bottom forward, or mid forward rather. Yeah, and a fantastic job here by Planet Key Dynamics. But what we are seeing here is exactly what we have said about this map multiple times. And that is, it's one of the most snowbally maps in the game and I like that all the guardians have spawned there at their bottom temple. Yep, um, BKB jumping straight in there. Um, I didn't even realize that Brightwing did make a comeback over um, in that top fight. Okay. And that's the last few shots from this temple. All three forts down, two levels down. SK is definitely in trouble now. Um, most of these camps should be backups pretty soon as well. 
So it looks like Planet Key is gearing up to take the next camps. Yeah, this siege camp will take another minute. Bruiser camp is up. They're probably going for that. Yep, sending a couple people over to that Bruiser camp. Individuum will clear the lane. And with that, they're getting ready for their next big push. Yeah, in this case, they've been doing a lot of, like, said big pushes. Been doing a great job of just dominating this. And I was talking about SK's comp earlier. And what I mentioned is Tranquility and Ufa's heal is basically going to keep them well, uh, very much healthy when they are holding a temple. The problem is they've never held a temple when their ults have been up. They've always been trying to assail a temple with their ults or been holding a temple when their ults are down, and they just can't get a good fight if they keep doing that. Yep. Definitely got getting in these spots where uh, they can actually hold on to these temples. Right now would be an option to uh, maybe take out one of these heroes, but nope. There comes Fevi back into the fight. They are 5v5 again. And zero kills so far for SK Gaming. And not getting on track and catching up in this game. Yeah, Last zero will respawn five. Can in we 20 have, seconds. Can we have a look at where those devs are spread around? The thing. I'm just waiting to catch up. The uh, control. I would like to point out Control 2 does that as well. Oh, okay. <laughs> in a much neater without covering the entire screen. So, uh, oh, yeah. Next team fight is coming in. There's the Maw to our Ragi. And Napsit catching quite a bit of damage. Looks like they can focus him out. Yui trying to save BKB. But BKB is still caught out. He can jump away though. And Individual Antihero also getting away. That's the first kill here for SK Gaming. And Individual might be in trouble. Into the root, onto BZ and Link. Zomni coming in from top. A good root onto Antihero, but they will stay safe behind these walls. Uh, fortunately for them, they didn't lose these gates early on. The temple is up in 5 seconds, and SK is in a really good position to finally take that temple and get in that position that we just talked about. Yep, SK finally in a decent position, but like we said earlier, all their ults are down, and we are seeing Planicky Dynamics right now. They don't really care. They are finally beginning to roll their way in here, but they wanted to clear a minion wave first just for XP, and here they come. Oh, they're going straight forward. There's a nice thundering. BZ will go down on the right side. But Furin taking out. Brightwing is taking out on their side, though. And Uther will also fall here. Zagara goes down. Zarmini caught out in between all of these guys. Maybe trying to jump away, and that's Arthas going down now. Bakery is the only one left alive for SK. And Antihero giving a little bit of a boost here. Try to get that final route onto Bakery, but uh, he might be able to get away. Where's the route? Jumping on top of him. Where's the route? Route all stun. Oh, there's the route, and hey, it takes him out. Go. That's the 5 for 1. Really good fight once again here for Planet Key Dynamics. Enough. Oh I don't think they're gonna push power. this too hard. They're gonna go Return for their mercenaries right now. Because all of them the did get yeah. did drop quite low. And um probably just gonna have to hardstone back. And just a great job there by Panicky Dynamics. And once again, I reiterate, SK once again had a good position and they didn't have their ultimates. They didn't have the tranquility to keep them alive in that fight. They didn't have the Divine Storm re-engage they use them before the temple fights and planet key are forcing them to do that they're losing single members in pretty much every fight and still keeping ultimates up for when they go for temples this is the first time that we've seen some really good sunderings tonight um <laughs> this is true i mean so far i think a sundering is a really good skill but this is the first time in a while that we've seen good sunderings that are actually working out quite well to zone out the enemy, to um, zone out single targets and go for them straight away. Um, so yeah, definitely a really good job um, by our Thrall player, Anti-Hero. And there goes the steal on the siege camp. So again, mercenaries uh, all over the place. Uh, no more steals are available for now, so they will go for their own siege camp. And yep, take out these cruisers in top lane. Very much so. Right now though, having a look at the talents, we're still seeing fairly standard stuff. We're seeing Rewind and Stoneform out of Muradin. Valor taking a blood for blood talent in this case, rather than a... Uh, what's the other talent at that level? It's a... Uh, I can't remember. I know, I know there is another option that's sometimes taken, but it depends. Oh, uh... Nope, nope, can't remember it. Never mind. Uh, <laughs> Mm. I thought maybe, uh, maybe Relentless, I'm not sure. Might be Relentless, not sure. 
But uh, oh, yeah, executioner. That's it. Oh, okay. So they're taking buff above over executioner gets much more burst out of valor. Rewind on Brightwing, also very nice. SK getting in good position to uh, actually keep control of this temple, but Zamini is getting pushed out here. All the roads are available. BKB not quite jumping in there. Ooh, he's getting rooted down. And yeah, Zamini with a good the route onto BKB. He jumps into his avatar form. Still, they're pushing back. They're retreating out of this. Only one heroic has been used here, and it's one by BKB. They can still make use of this, still go for that top temple. And yeah, this is solid control going to SK towards that middle temple. It's a little bit more flexible, you talked about this earlier. It can attack both sides, and so it will. This bottom fort might fall, but I kind of doubt it. Oh, nice move, Planet Key coming in from the left side. Zamni caught out here. They're also trying to go towards Link. Zamni getting a few more shots, and BKB going straight for Link. And Zamni caught out in the Reign of Vengeance. Still trying to follow him, the route misses. And Zamini might have enough time to get off. Nope, he can't. CC didn't hit Fury here. So that's two for zero. And KD, they can push this really hard if they want to. Two main heroes gone, Arthas and Uther. But I doubt that they'll go for the Juggler right now. They're still not level 20, but they will get a key here. That was a fantastic move by Planet Key Dynamics. They moved their way up to the top plane when they realized they weren't going to win the fight while SK had all their ultimates up. This is what we didn't see a lot of other teams do earlier yep. in the tournament. They moved their way up, started on the temple, and then immediately, they, when they saw Zagara had beat back and gone to the bottom lane, they were like, we have a number advantage. We have uh, equal numbers and they don't have ults. So they immediately turned around left right wing in the top lane who could teleport if she was needed and went straight back into that temple to take out the ultimateless SK Gaming. And it worked perfectly. Yeah, that was a really nice surprise move. Coming in from the left side and also cutting off their retreat path. Really good job. Now the siege camp is up. Both of these teams just riding side by side. Looks like Planet Key is retreating here. They still have 18 seconds on their Archon cooldown, so I don't think they want to force a fight right now. Boss is coming up in one minute. Oh, nice Storms here. Yep, Storms giving them the vision. If you don't have Oracle, Storm will fill in just as well. SK, going to be able to grab that uh, hard camp though. Not losing too much there, but we are seeing Panicky killing that off very quickly. Oh, a good mod to Napsy and Antihero. See if they can get in a good position. Yes, I think they can. Link going straight for that. Napsy pushing everyone back. And I think he might stay safe here. Link should go down. Yes, he does. They're trying to follow this up. Thrall does go down now. And BKB trying to get on top of Zarmini. But he's trying to block Individuum from getting away here. And Individuum using the face shift. Still caught out though. And Zarmini might get the final blow. The shield saves it for now. And Nepsa comes in for another heal. Arthas is taken out on the left side there. Aragi being pushed back. But BKB is incredibly low. I think he needs to get away. Zagara did fall though. I think Fury got the final kill there. So yep. still really good control in these team fights from PK, uh, PKD. You have so many people drop low there, but they still managed to get a free for one. Yeah, incredibly good control. I mean, Tassadar, some good shields, nice face shift, and then um, Brightwing coming back for that final heal, even though he was incredibly low as well. So definitely some good moves. But right now, um, SK kind of waiting. Bakery trying to scout out, okay, which temples are they going for? These temples are going to hurt quite a bit. Nepson going for the Polymorph, he's still waiting for some support. Actually go for Bakery, uh, ooh, pushing him out, and wow, he might actually go he's down here. Yes, him. he will. He's pushed into the corner, and Fury will take him out. Oh, well, that's Top Shrine under pure control here for PKD. And so is Mid Shrine. Yep, and this is going to take down at least one of the keeps. I think it already has taken down one of them. I can't see very well uh, from here. But second one, also taking a lot of damage. Double temple oh, barrage. All keeps are down. Keeps. All keeps are down. The core is losing uh, shields rapidly. It. All the shields are gone now. Quite a few shots are left in these, in both of these temples. And there's the final few shots. Let's see how much damage this does. Uh, down to 50 health. Well, I think the, the mule is healing that up. They, that mule is going to be the MVP. If SK has any chance of coming back, it's going to be off back that 38%. Good lord. And uh, now PKD going for the boss. So with the boss and Sea Shine and Bruce is pushing in all lanes, this is going to be this is going to be the go for the juggler here by PKD. Yep. Uh, let's see. They need to rally up again. It looks like they're going for the bot lane. 
all together again, again. If you have the, the boss, are up. it's a good place to go for it. Like you said, ults are up. They have a boss. This is the chance. Yeah, they don't want to engage on the bridge. The bridge is really, really uh, troublesome for them, especially with that maw that could hit. And there it is, but only getting into Vidoum. And there, they just putting out the focus fire onto Aragi, onto Link. Both of them should go down. Link gets a good shield there, but no, he's coming back, going for the CC, stopping Anti-Hero for now. But they're all just going for the chase. Bakery drops out of the Odin, and he's being there up with the first aid. Easy. And getting a few shots here for BKB and everyone, they're just focusing on the core, going for the final blow. And that's the 2-0 here for Planet Key Dynamics. They are our grand final winner here in the Go For Heroes EU number 9. Very well played by Planet Key Dynamics, doing a masterclass on the Sky Temple there. And showing very good, uh, a very good draft and very good play with a multitude of heroes in the first match on the Dragonshire as well.